want to give you some John Maxwell today, my favorite uh, leadership, if you want to call him guru. I don't think he'd probably want that to be said. He, he's written so many books. I think he's got over 50 leadership books written and just love his work. You can always find his books uh, pre-owned on eBay with free shipping for like four bucks um, or you can go on Kindle and get them. They run specials and stuff like that and, and they're worth it. So this book that I have in my hand right now that I, I've read multiple times is called The 21 Most Powerful Minutes in a Leader's Day. And I kind of want to give you guys just a sample. And it goes by week every, and then you're supposed to look at it and contemplate on each day. So it gives you kind of like a couple pages for each day. And then it's basically supposed to take like 21 minutes and that in 21 days it develops a habit, of that type of thing for you to be able to kind of meditate, relax, Pray, whatever you may do. And so it gives you a thought for you to meditate on. It says, leadership thought for today. Connection requires intentional effort. Connection requires intentional effort. And as a leader, it is our responsibility to make that intentional effort. That's why we're a leader. It's not the responsibility for someone to reach out to us. It's our responsibility for us to reach out to them. That's unconditional love. That's that's. I, I'm not concerned about what the people that I lead, how they're reciprocating to me. I'm concerned about how I'm reciprocating to them. I'm not narcissistic. I don't need feedback from them for my worth or the relationship to be justified. I'm their leader. Thus, it is for me to serve. And he uses scripture because he, he, he was uh, a pastor, a, a megachurch pastor. He uses scripture, Proverbs eleven twenty five, and I love this. He who refreshes others will himself be refreshed. And he says, connection isn't something that just happens once you establish a relationship with the person. It requires more than saying hello in the halls or sending a Christmas form letter to everyone in your organization. It requires an investment in another's life. But unlike an investment that you make in a bank, your connection with others won't grow by making one deposit. For a productive connection, you must regular you must make regular deposits in others' lives. I do this all the time. And this is something, I, I don't know whether I heard it from John Maxwell or Stephen Covey, but th they talked about making deposits in people's lives. Because sometimes you're going to have to take a withdrawal. Sometimes you're going to have to ask somebody to work over the weekend. Sometimes you're going to have to ask them to do extra work. And I always look at, have I put a lot of deposits in this person's? Before I'm going to ask them to do something extra, how many deposits have I put into their account? And you as a leader, you need to be looking at, not, not people as like bank accounts, but that should be an aspect of your coaching, is how much value have I given them? How much have I helped them change their lives? Specifically, what have I done here? Have I left them a little handwritten note on their desk? Just telling them how much I appreciate them. How quick and easy is that to do? and you will literally make their day or week. The truth is that the work of connecting is never finished. True connection is an ongoing effort. But all great leaders know that no job is more important than their continual investment in people. It's that continual building of that relationship through coaching. You as a leader, coaching that person to become a leader. John Maxwell says, the truth is that the work of connecting is never finished. True connection is an ongoing effort. So how do you connect, continually connect with people? And he gives us seven action that he believes every leader needs to carry out on a continual basis. Number one is connect with yourself. Do you know your strengths and weaknesses? Understand yourself before trying to understand others. And if you have that positive self-image, if you're that self-aware leader, you're going to be able to understand and know where you're coming from and when you're having conversations with people, by you being self-aware, you're going to be able to realize and give the wisdom that's there. Number two, share with openness and sincerity. Are you willing to be vulnerable with others? Vulnerability is an equalizer and will immediately help others relate to you on their level. Openness and sincerity. So many times we want to tell that white lie so we don't have to have the conversation so many times we want to shortcut or hack it. So many times we want to hide the way that we're feeling. Openness and sincerity is so important, guys. You can't have a relationship unless you have that. How do you expect to have a relationship with the people that work for you if you're not open and sincere? Number three, live your message. 
Are you doing what you're asking others to do? This is so important. I always love Captain Kirk on the old school Star Trek where he's the first one out the door in the new planet. He's always the brave one. He's the one I lead and I lead from example. And I love that. Make sure your actions are always consistent with your words. Integrity promotes trust. Integrity creates trust, I believe. Trust comes from integrity. Day in and day out, them seeing you living out. I I just read the new Starbucks CEO wants to work half a day in the cafe. Why is he wanting to do that? He needs perspective outside of the boardroom. He needs perspective outside of everyone giving him these glamour shots are there. He has so many managers that don't even do anything. And I'm not saying don't do anything. I'm saying don't do anything on the ground. Like the the foot soldiers, he wants to go, he wants to bypass all those filters he's receiving and get exactly where he needs to be at. This is so important. You need to do this. If you if you're a CEO or a high level manager and you haven't had the conversation or haven't done the jobs on the boots on the ground you need to do that go have those conversations go do sales be with your sales team once a month put yourself in those lower positions in each department just sit there for half a day and then buy them lunch and then leave it's super simple and it's going to give you so much insight you're going to be able to see problems as they arise in real time and how people handle them. Number four, know your audience. Do you understand the needs of your people? When you know what your people need, you can focus your actions on meeting those needs. What's the needs of your people? You don't know that unless you're with them. That shepherd and sheep, and as we see that example, that great leader Jesus And you can see his example is with his disciples, teaching his disciples, coaching his disciples. They were learning on the spot. Number five, communicate on others' level. How do you come across when you talk to your people? Have you asked yourself this? This is part of self-awareness training, guys. How am I coming across the way that I speak? Am I doing this out of ego and trying to make people feel ashamed by the language that I use because I can talk very fluent and I have, you know, I can use big words. So I'm going to do that to um, these what I perceive to be lower class people in my organization. So they think I'm really smart and they'll be like, Oh, he's the CEO. Or do I seek to be understood? And so I'm flexible in the language that I use and I'm flexible in the way that I approach people because my whole idea is to ask questions and listen to them. I want to listen. It's not about me. It's about them. If you're condescending, your people will come to resent you. But when you talk to them as friends, they will come to respect you. This is so important, guys. I talk to a lot of people in organizations, and I ask them about their managers or their leaders. So many people do not respect. When they're honest with me, it's kind of like, you know, I I work for him. He's a good guy. Or, or she's awesome. But I, I can't trust. It's either the trust or the respect. How are you going to have a relationship when you don't have trust and don't have respect? You're paying them. There's no trust and respect. You're just paying them to do something. This has to be solved. It's time for you to step up as a leader and earn their respect and earn their trust. My old school uh, Marine Corps, I need to find the poster and put it in my office, but um, there was a poster called Earned, Never Given. And I love that. I so love that. It's earned. Trust is earned. Respect is earned. Love is earned. Working hard, doing what you're supposed to do, not letting things bypass you, being self-aware. Those things are all earned. Being a leader is earned. Number six, believe totally in your people. Do you believe in the ability of your people to succeed? As a leader, you have the job of setting your people up for success. That requires you to demonstrate your trust in them. It's decentralized leadership, guys. Then number seven, offer direction and hope. Are you inspiring to your people? In every form of communication, whether words or actions, you should be a positive encouragement to your people. The ability to connect with people is essential if you want strong, successful leadership. Years ago, I determined what things were most important for me to invest in each day to succeed as a leader. And I came up with these things. And I love these. Creativity, connecting, networking, and communicating. Creativity, connecting, networking, and communicating. John Maxwell just gave you his secret to how successful he was. 
He said, if you want strong, successful leadership, he's determined these were the four most important things that he invested his day in. Creativity, connecting, networking, communicating. So beautiful, guys. That right there is gold. Gold bars. Big gold bars. He said, if you notice three out of the four items have to do with connecting. I spend 75% of every day connecting with people. Let me stop. Did you hear that? Anything John Maxwell's done, he's been super successful at. Neurotrans bestseller, whatever. Pastor to church, grew it to a huge mega church. Everything he touches seems like it turns to gold because it's leadership and he understands that and knows that. He's an expert in that arena and an expert in leadership that spent decades and decades of being successful says, I spend 75% of every day connecting with people. Imagine that. Imagine that. Imagine if your day as a leader, 75% of it was just connecting with people. You need to work on getting that percentage up. Maybe you have to start at 10%, then 25%, then 35 and start delegating these tasks away. The things that you think are valuable, but they're not valuable. What do you do throughout the day that you can eliminate so that you can do the most valuable work and that is connecting with people and coaching them? He said, I do that because I've learned, as I believe every leader should, that the more time you contribute to establishing and strengthening your connection with people, the more opportunities you will have to lead. Oh, that's so good. <laughs> if you're connecting with people, if you're communicating with people, if you're strengthening people, if you're establishing relationship with people, that that conversation allows you to be able to lead it gives you an opportunity to show leadership so today's question for reflection is this in what areas do you need to improve your connection with others thank you for joining us on the albuquerque business podcast and thanks to our sponsor rigbydigital.com make sure to subscribe and share and go to abqpodcast.com get show notes resources and links to everything we talked about today to help you navigate your journey as an entrepreneur and business owner